We are here uh, with somebody who I think is one of the most dominant centers in NBA history. It's hard to argue. Uh, obviously, a, a bad boys legend, an NBA legend, uh, somebody who was a part of a huge turning point uh, in the entire league uh, here with former Detroit Piston and world champion Rick Mahorn. Dude, thanks for coming on today. I appreciate it. Well, thanks for having me. Absolutely. You know, I, uh, I've actually seen you a couple times. I used to work at uh, C.J. Mahoney's in Rochester Hills. So. Oh, shit. Yeah. That used to be my spot. <laughs> yeah, actually, I, I worked there. Uh, I was a cook there from, I think it was like 2010 to 2017. So I probably made some food for you. <laughs> Yeah, probably did. It probably said, send it back. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, no joke. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. DJ <laughs> Mahoney. Yep. Yeah, that was a spot for a while. So, yeah, I, I moved out here to Kalamazoo in 2017. So, so you out at the zoo, huh? Yep. Yep, we're on the uh, on the west the west side over here. So, I still go back home because I actually grew up in Rochester Hills. So. Oh, okay. Hey, thank you for having me, Mark. But let's get some corrections. All right. Play power forward. Power forward. Not a center. <laughs> I ain't no big goof. I could move a little bit. Lambeer was the center. He was. He was taking a lot of the. Uh, he took a lot of punishment back then too. Well, back then, man, yeah, that was then. Now he ain't taking no punishment. He's right. just winning championships with the women. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So thanks for having me, Mark. Oh, dude, absolutely. It's it's a pleasure. You know, it's. Uh, it, you know, a couple of years ago when um, that 30 for 30 came out, that was uh, that that was for me, that was huge because I think a lot of Detroit teams, especially the Pistons and and the Red Wings catch a lot of flack. Um, and there there's at times they have been some of the most dominant uh, teams. I think it's hard to argue that, you know, the bad boys team at that time was the most dominant force in the NBA. Uh, you guys had everyone's head on a swivel constantly. Um, and a lot of people thought it was, you know, aggressive, but there was a lot of calculation in the way you guys were playing. Well, uh, no, thank you for saying there was a lot of calculations because you're right when you say that. We were very physical. It wasn't that we were dominant, but it was just the fact that we would, we would abide by the rules. The rules say you could do this, but we would go just a little bit – to the rule, but never go over the rule. But it was a it was a fun time that we represented and we embraced what Michigan was all about was hardworking people, and that's where you know you look at it. You look around Michigan, you and Kalamazoo. It's all about uh, strapping up your boots and let's let's get out there and work. So that's why when you look at our championship teams and you look at the the O four championship team, it was more like okay, let's go to work. It's about work and identity. It wasn't about individuality. It was all about a team sport, and we played it to everybody played their role to the fullest. For sure, absolutely. Now this is you know with the you know COVID nineteen and everything that's happening right now. Obviously, everything has had to change. Uh, including sports, and it's obviously a little bit different feel. But um, as we hopefully are turning the corner on uh, the pandemic here, um, and and you've been basically named the ambassador for DraftKings, which is now uh, one of the uh, one of the premier online betting companies um, that's now legalized in Michigan. Correct? Yes, it is. It starts today. Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, to be. To be, you know, uh, have a privilege to be an ambassador for the uh, DraftKings, I, I just think that it, it just shows that, you know, you have legal wages coming across the board instead of going to the back room or the black market to make some bets is something that you can do right outstanding and right in front of you. And listen, with the way modern technology is, everybody's kind of in the house, might as well put some skin in the game. Right, right, that's exactly. The thing about, yeah, you put some skin in the game. And also, it's like, you know what, Mark, I look at it where you're saying, okay, you talk, you know, I go to the barbershop, I don't know, you probably go to the salon, but <laughs> you also look at the way sports are now because it's like with this pandemic, you're looking at different opportunities. You know, you're looking at football, for example. I'm looking at, you know, this the, the divisional cha championships this weekend. And I'm and don't get me wrong. I know I'm I'm in Detroit, uh, Detroit Lions country, but I'm kind of rooting for Green Bay to win to beat <laughs> to beat the Tampa Bay uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers because I am a New England Patriots fan. Right, I right. Like Tom Brady. <laughs> 
See, but the, the you know the U of M fans have been pretty loyal to Tom Brady throughout his career. So, yeah. yeah that, <laughs> see, because it's you. You notice the key word U of M. Yeah, he was there before he was a Patriot. So I didn't. I went to school in Virginia, and I'm from Connecticut. So right. I was like, oh. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> you're right. You don't have that same kind of dedication to him. <laughs> well, with the, with the with the pandemic and and obviously with online sports betting, uh, do you think this is like with sports books uh, coming into Michigan and now being legalized? I think that's kind of the new spark that Detroit sports uh, fans need, especially you know while all their teams are going through somewhat of a rebuilding phase. Yes, I mean, it's, it's very key because it's, it's, it's different type bettings that you can do uh, right now. I mean, who scores, the first, you know, who scores the first point in football, field goals and things like that. Those are things that you're putting skin in the game. Understanding that, hey, you, we, you know, it's like you sit and you have bragging rights to a degree if you just say, all right, let's just bet. But now you got some bragging rights with, with a little bit of change in your pocket. And, you know, something yeah. that if you feel uh, being home and cooped up, you're looking at, you're going to look at sports. Sports is something, it's entertainment to keep you, you know, keep your mind occupied instead of thinking about what's going on around the world. It's just a brief moment in time that you can do something and, and enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And and again, a lot of people, you know, I've I've known people throughout the years who are d- not huge on sports and and honestly, it's 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 very easy for pe- people to sit at home on their couch and criticize, but these are people who have literally worked their whole lives to get to this point. And there's more that you see uh than than what you see on TV. There's there's dedication, there's working out, you know, it's a lifestyle. You have to maintain that lifestyle if you're going to have any kind of longevity uh, in professional sports. That is true. You know, I was blessed to have at least 18 NBA years with one year overseas. I was blessed to play that long. And then this, and this kind of, you look at a guy like Tom Brady, who's 43, guy yeah. like Drew Brees, it's about dedicating your body to what your craft is about. I always would tell most players that I meet and, and, and conversate with, I tell them this is what, you know, you have to make this your, your – you go back to the lab. It's your craft. This is what you do for a living. But also you have to enjoy it. It keeps you, it keeps you in, in the peak uh, interest of what you're doing for a living. Right. Absolutely. And, and you know, speaking of your time – in the NBA, obviously, and touching a little bit on, you know, the, the Pistons 30 for 30, um, you know, it, it's obvious from your testimonials in that film that your time with the Pistons was incredibly important. And, uh, you know, obviously the championship was bittersweet because, you know, two days later, you know, you got this unfortunate news. And I'm, I'm just curious to get your take because it seems like if you because you you and Lambeer especially uh, that that pairing on the court was just so dangerous and not in the uh, violent aspect, but dangerous as in, you know, two of the top players in their positions and, and, you know, and with this reputation behind it, that you guys are aggressive players, um, not necessarily in, like I said, in the, in the violent sense, but in the skilled sense. Well, you know, what? it's the fact that being a skilled player and also, you know, bringing, the, the the competitive edge that Bill Lambeer and I had, it was the fact that you always look at Bill and say, well, he can't jump. He can't run fast. The thing about it is just being smart enough and have the basketball IQ that we had that we can cut off the court. We could defend you to a point that, okay, we're going to frustrate you and you're going to think about us. But by, by that time, the game would be over. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm in a room right now and I'm reading something that it would just – that just becomes prevalent when you mention the bad boys. It says uh, a quote by uh, Chuck Bailey: "Do you want to be known as a great player, or do you want to be known as a champion?" And I mean that right there. Those words resonate with what what it's all about. Yeah. Even though I was a, 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 a I was a good player. I'm not saying I was a great player, but I was I had a job, and also it was something that I enjoyed doing. Basketball is something that you grow up playing. And then to get paid for it, it even only makes it a lot sweeter. But my whole thing is you were talking about me being uh, two days later uh, about leaving the Pistons. Yeah, 
the reality is that you do get drafted and you do and you do get traded and the thing is that's the business of basketball that you don't want to see but now I love what the players are doing now that they can kind of dictate where they want to go yeah. and have control of what their their career can be yeah and a lot of people don't like that and I'm like but you know let's in just even bringing you know I, I know a lot of people <clears throat> part of me in in Michigan and and definitely from what I see on my feed a lot of people were hating on people like LeBron James for setting up a team the you know and and basically saying oh well it doesn't really count because they stack the team and I go well wait a minute what about the 2002 Red Wings that is probably one of the nastiest sports teams of all time we're talking about at least a dozen hall of famers on the team you know, it just it you know it's it's a different sport, but again, we have to remember you know we're not we're not completely innocent either. <laughs> you know, it's about winning championships. Oh, no, it's also, <laughs> it's also about being you know in the place where you feel comfortable. I right. A lot of times, you know, with the uh, with players, you know, kind of picking and choosing where they go. I don't mind that because I was in situations I'd be in the locker room, and next thing you know, one guy be. Dressing, and next thing you know, he was going out of the locker room. He was traded to the other team. <laughs> yeah, right in the middle of the, you know, right in the middle of the game. Sometimes, so, right. I mean, I, I don't mind what the, these young men do with their, or these these athletes do with their time. I I think that when you can play in a pickup game and you can pick your friends and do what you want to do, is that fair? I mean, people look at it, it can be uh, hypocritical and being on the couch and saying, "Oh, that's not right." But there's some people that are lifers in, in all sports. I mean, we look at it with Tom Brady. Well, you know, I looked yeah. at it for him to go to Tampa Bay and leave in you know, New England. Those were, I mean, you think he was going to retire as a Patriot, but, hey, this, this is a basketball. Somebody else might want to give you more money. Right. Yeah, exactly. Now, I know it's a little subjective, but like I said, that, that 30 for 30 uh, made us privy to things I think maybe we weren't aware of before, uh, definitely about how the Pistons were built at that time. Um, and I know it's a, a subjective question, but it feels like the team had been built for success and you, you guys finally achieved that success. Do you feel like if you hadn't been traded, you guys would have been able to maintain and be a, uh, obviously they won back to back championships, but be a uh, heavy hitter for the finals the next say like five years after that. Yeah, yeah, you know it is like, like you said. It is subjective. It's saying woulda, coulda, shoulda. Right. If things woulda happened, you know they were fortunate to win a second championship, which I applaud them. They beat my fellas. They beat they uh, they Chicago. We couldn't get past Chicago with Charles Barkley. Right. Always saying um, uh, Michael Jordan is my friend. I can't hit him. And I'm sitting there going like we ain't going nowhere. This was it. But yeah. it's the fact that you know what it makes other teams want want to be where you are. And one thing that I don't like about the history of uh, the NBA, they go, they go Celtics, Lakers, and then they go Chicago Bulls. That right. kind of uh, perturbs me because you forget about the Detroit Pistons and you forget about the Houston Rockets that were worked in there as well, two back-to-back champions, and you go, what, where, where, where did they go? I mean, Houston was very good, and we were very good. So yeah. it would have been dominant if I would have probably stayed more than likely. But, you know, things change. That's what, it, that's what it's all about. People move on. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, even with documentaries like Last Stand and everything, still seems that there's like a little bit of bitterness for that whole time period. You watch, you watch that crap. Yeah, well, here's the thing. When I grew up, like when I had nothing to do. Yeah. (laughs) When I I I wasn't wasting no none of my hours to watch (laughs) ten hours of that crap. The the main reason I the main reason I watched it was because I was starting to see some reviews about what they had to say about the the whole rivalry between Bulls and Pistons. And like I said, it just still it still seems like there's some kind of hostility there. And you know, no, I, you know what it is. You know, everybody thinks it's hostility, and you know, it's always something for news to write about. Yeah, you know that. You know, Jordan doesn't like Isaiah. You know, maybe that is true. I mean, I know Lamb. I mean, Larry Bird don't like Bill Lambeer. So, I mean, who do you like, Mark? Sometimes I look at it. You know, you, you're in this industry. You might like don't like somebody at another station. Those are the things that I look at. But like Robert Parrish. Uh, uh, Cedric Maxwell, guys that uh, Dominique Wilkins, guys that I've 
battled against, we talk, we, we enjoy it because, you know, we're only the, 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 the building blocks of making this NBA the way it is. True. Yeah, very true. And, and what do you think, what do you see the major difference uh, from the time that you spent in the league till now? Like what's, what's, is there one thing uh, in general that you see as a major difference between the two time periods or do you think the sport changes with the time? Well, of course, changes with the times. But look, if I could have been playing now, I could have been, I could have been a twenty million dollar guy. Yeah, no That's joke. One thing that changed, <laughs> but also, I could be shooting three pointers and won't get benched. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Hey, listen, Mark. It'd be like, okay, you shoot a three pointer. Here's your sub. <laughs> Oh man, what's what, what's like one of your funny funniest memories from playing a game? I mean, I know it's obviously a serious thing, but there's got to be some things that happen that are just that make you crack up while you're playing. Oh my gosh, just you know, just thinking about it. Let my my kids. This is what's funny. My kids are you know they were just coming around when uh, at, about later on in my career. But they found a box of VCR tapes in the basement yeah. that had all the Pistons stuff on it, and they put it in. And they fa- when they finished watching just about three of them, they came upstairs and they looked at me and said, boy, you were mean. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sitting there looking at them. What do you mean? I'm, I mean, I'm a nice dad. I'm a disciplinarian yeah. type dad, but I'm pretty, you know, I'm pretty nice guy off the court. <laughs> right. They said, ooh. They were like, oh, that now that was the funniest thing because they never really saw me play. Right, right. <laughs> Which is like, you know, you're in your element, you're young, and you're you know, you're in the zone basically. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. in that zone of kicking ass and taking names, and they were like, whoa, yeah, yeah. can't be held Ooh. responsible for yeah, what I used to do. Like, well, I'm glad you're nice, Dad. I'm yeah. glad you're nice. <laughs> Obviously, well, and and you know, like you said, it the Pistons kind of got left out of that, that championship run. Like the, you know, they, they look at bird magic and then Jordan and it's like, nah, two years Pistons were dominant and they, you know, nobody could mess with them. Nobody could touch them. And they were in everyone's heads. We have three hall of famers on that team. Hopefully we get a fourth one with Bill Lambeer. For sure. But also you look, you look at, uh, you look at the Houston Rockets. They got uh, Elijah Wan and uh, Clyde Drexler. Yeah, uh, those those are some Hall of Famers. So I mean, hey, it, it is what it is. But all we know in Detroit and Michigan that the bad boys and the the go to work guys, we are a three time champion up in there. Yeah, absolutely, man. What's uh to to wrap it up? Like, what's what's one thing? Obviously, like I said, there's a lot of rebuild going on with D- Detroit teams right now. Um, What's the best thing that the Pistons are going to need in order to lead them back to that that title run era again? Well, the thing is, you know, you got to get the right pieces, and I think Troy Weaver has done a great job of just making sure that you get players that's going to compete. And I look at it each game. It's only been one game or two games that the Pistons have been probably blown out in a couple of losses. But when you look at it, they've been in, you know, they're only losing by 10. And you go know, like, we you see something there because it's the fact that you can compete and not play just don't you have to learn how to play 48 minutes instead of learning how to play 40 minutes or 38 minutes those are the things that are key for the young guys to learn yeah. and the older guys to mentor them to get better yeah no doubt conditioning is super crucial yes it is conditioning and making their minds understand that this ain't college no more this is 48 minutes so let's get out here and play yeah no doubt, man. Well, very excited, obviously, uh, you being named ambassador of uh, DraftKings and obviously the sports book that's launched, uh, the online betting that's now legalized in Michigan. And like I said, hopefully we're turning the corner on the pandemic thing so that you can kind of uh, get back to seeing our friends and our family and um, get, you know, get back into the arenas and, and to be able to to cheer again and to, to celebrate uh, that hard work because I think that's the biggest thing missing from sports right now. Yes, it is. The fans are so important for sports, but it's also, like you said, this pandemic has been strange. It's been something that 
Uh, a lot of people have never witnessed, and, and probably, hopefully, they don't witness this in their life ever again, just making sure that you stay safe out there and pray that, you know what, when you do, um, when you're out and about, make sure you uh, apply by the rules, so six feet, and make sure you wash your hands. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, got to stay safe if we're going to get back to normal. Well, dude, I appreciate you spending some time with me. Uh, super nice of you. Super nice to talk to you. Um, and like I say, if you ever want to uh, talk again about anything, uh, feel free to hit me up because I'm always down. All right. Well, you know that I, I probably just need a, a burger and some fries. Come on, Mark. Hey, man. <laughs> need some burgers and fries. You can cook that, can't you? I'll hook it up. You know what? I'll even give you a side of cheese. You'll be good to go. <laughs> All right, man. You you stay blessed and stay out of stay safe. Hey, you too, man. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. No problem. Thanks. <laughs> Take care, man.